All right, welcome all. You got through midterm week, and now we get to start a new assignment that combines what we've learned about raster imaging with what we've learned about vectors with making original artwork like you did for your logo. But this time we're going to do it as a spot illustration. So if we go to assignments and we scroll down to assignment five, you'll see a lot of extra supplemental material, right? And we're going to look at some of this and we're going to have our own mentorship presentations from our own digital honors students starting next class on it. But this is all to say, this is a really, really popular profession, <laughs> working with these kind of small uh, spot illustrations, poster illustrations, sticker illustrations, tattoo illustrations, children's book illustrations, t-shirt illustrations, all of it will fall under this skill set. So it can be incredibly versatile. So if we look at the assignment itself, it's at the, the end of unit 11. This is assignment 5. We are first trying to make what's called digital inking, or what's called digital line art, black line art. But line art can include not just outlines. It can also include things like hatching, which is like linear marks that suggest gray tones or stippling, which are tiny dots of black ink that suggest gray tones, or a mix of both, right? So we're not going for something that's photorealistic. We're not going for something that's really cartoony. It can be anything you want, as long as it has outlines. So this is my basic example here. We'll be referring to this quite a bit as we talk about digital inking and digital coloring. Uh, first, you start with a sketch. Then we're going to clean up that line the best way to clean up a line is to make it into a vector. Right? Unfortunately, there's no free way to turn your raster lines into a vector, but with Adobe Illustrator, it's really easy to do. And there are a lot of other programs where you always have to pay something for them. But we, we'll have that option to turn it into a vector. Then we're going to put flat color behind it, like a stained glass window. And then we're going to tint and tone that, that flat color towards highlights and shadows. We'll have the option to, to soften those gradations. We can add more uh, spectrums of color, and then we can even change the color of our line art. But this is digital coloring because all of the coloring happens underneath the line art. Right? That's how it's different than digital painting. Then we'll put an offset behind it, and we'll eventually put it onto a background for poster design in our next assignment. And we'll even learn how to separate it into professional color separation, which is called CMYK dot separation. Whew. We have slides here, an exhaustive explanation of digital coloring. This is what we're going to get to next class. First, we need to get to the clean line art. So we can try some different concepts. The concept of this was to change, and I have a printout of this up on the whiteboard, um, to change our existing mascot of Nico the Nighthawk. And when Pokemon Go came out, which I guess was 2016, I think it was close to like 2017 or 18, it really took off. And our campus was kind of a prominent spot for people collecting. So, so PR asked me if I would create a Pokemon version of our Nico the Nighthawk, right? So I had two different kind of concepts that I, I went with the cuter, younger concept. This was my refined sketch. I turned that into clean vector line art, which is what we're going to learn today. Filled it with local color, which just means one single pixel of color for each shape. Added some white highlights. Added some what's called duotone coloring. So I have kind of darker and lighter versions of each color, kind of gradated, soft edged. Then some overlaid some highlights, then did some soft edge duotone shadows. And then to finish it off, I actually did some stuff on top of the line art. So the line art turned to a brown color. Whenever you change the black line art, that's called a color hold. And then I added these highlights you know, to show the talons being sharp, the metal being shiny. And those are all on top of the line art. Those are called color holes. But this is digital coloring because we are coloring behind line art, right? Digital painting does not use line art. 
So we're going to be learning all these skills. And then there's a lot to it that we'll get into. But for right now, all of these different tutorials or uh, in process, you'll see that it starts with a loose sketch like that and then gets into clean lines like that. Or this example. This is someone from Pasadena, went to my undergrad school. Beautiful line art, flat color, duotone color. Just really straightforward. But what you'll notice is they all have to have this very confident kind of inking line. <laughs> and the digital tools can help us with that. Because I tend to be a sketcher. My lines are very, very sketchy when I start. And so to ink, I have to kind of change modes and get to like smooth, meditative lines. But the programs can help us. So that's what we're going to learn today. Yeah, flat color is, can be really, really pleasing, right? And you can go really detailed. These are some professional examples that use the same method, right? You can look at more of their work. Um, you can go really simple. And let's look at some past student work. They started with some inspiration. And they mostly used the inspiration to steal a color palette from, which will be helpful when we get to coloring. But they like, they like kind of American uh, anime. And so they sketched. Then they cleaned up the lines. We're going to try to get to this part by the beginning of next class, where we're, we all have clean line art by the beginning of next class. And then they did some pretty simple coloring that with the line art is just incredibly effective. And again, it's a spot illustration, right? It's free floating, works as a sticker, works as a, a t-shirt design. Okay. So this was our theme, indeterminate monsters. Each of you chose one of the things that's on this list. You might need to um, research them a little bit. Did anyone get a Wendigo? Very good. Anyone get this one, the Caribits? All right. So if you research these, it will kind of show you the, uh, the mythological basis of it. But then you can push it in any direction you want. So mine, I got Gorgon. And I know that uh, this is from Greek mythology. Uh, Medusa, which is another option. Anyone get Medusa? All right. Now Medusa is one of the Gorgons. But Gorgons are just these kind of mutated sisters, I think. And so I wanted to play with mine and make it into not something that's hideous and scary and punished by the gods, but something that's really kind of kid-friendly. And I wanted to make it an illustration for like a kid's animated show. So for my Gregarious Gordon, Gorgon, this was the sketch I came up with. So I just sketched it in pencil. and then took a photo of it, right? So it's going to be this little preschooler on the back of this weird kind of snake-like hamster creature. I don't know. And then because Medusa is fun, I'm going to have it like these this sun rays of snakes coming out of the back. And you don't know if those snakes are from the preschooler up here who has this little like striped jumper. That just says preschool to me or if it comes from, from this weird creature. And then this creature is going to have some sort of weird shirt collar thing as well. So it's just going to be colorful, bright, and notice how everything is contained. So this is kind of inspired by animation, but every shape, it really helps in your inking if you can contain it all as one clean shape that makes it really easy to select for coloring. So everything's contained. So even if it's not in your sketch, we're going to ink with that in mind. And you can always improve upon your sketch with your inking. So to start, I'm going to open up. Well, since I have my sketch, I can go ahead and put that right into Canvas. It's great to acknowledge the deadline right away by putting your sketch. And to think about your sketch a little bit. And now what you're going to do with your sketch to turn it into clean inked lines, which is the next step, this step, right, this step, is we're going to go into Photoshop, not Photoshop, we're going to go into Photopea, our freeware version of Photoshop. So I'm going to open up Photopea. 
You can do this multiple ways. I'm going to try to demonstrate multiple ways to do it. And you could even sketch it entirely in the computer, but it does require a tablet. Sketching with a mouse is just not really conducive to anything of quality. So I have my pencil sketch there. How would I sketch something like that in Photopea? It's also going to be the same way I set it up to, to digitally ink it in Photopea. I'm going to start a new project. And because I get to control it, I'm going to put my name in here. And assignment five. And this is going to be my color spot illustration. But it all starts with a sketch. But I want to sketch it to the right dimensions. And we're going to be using this for a lot of things. So the most versatile would be to make it 11 inches wide by 14 inches tall at 350 pixels per inch. If you do it at 11 by 14 by 350, then you will be able to print this at any of the three sizes we support for the lab, from 8 by 10 up to 16 by 20. Remember, Photo P likes to glitch out sometimes, and so you want to make sure, <laughs> yeah, it glitched out, that it is 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch under image size. Because when you do digital inking in a raster program, resolution really matters. You want it to be clean. Okay, first I'm going to start. You always want a blank white background. So I'm actually going to rename this blank white. So my background is blank white, and I'm going to lock it. So I can't ever accidentally paint on that layer. I'm going to make a new layer on top of that, and this is I'm going to call my sketch. Even though I already have a sketch, I'm going to show you just how you can do it digitally. Those of you who are used to using Procreate on a tablet or used to you know, making illustrations on your own, you might already sketch digitally as your preference. So the tool for that is a tool we haven't used too much, and it's the brush tool in Photopea. The brush tool gives you tool options at the top. The first tool option you're going to want is pressure sensitivity just for your sketch. That's a big advantage for using the tablet. The next tool options you want are the brush size and hardness. So I want the brush size to be big enough that I can see it and that it's like a small pencil eraser, like the, the eraser on a mechanical pencil. That means when I paint with it, with the default color of black, if I touch really lightly, it will be a really thin line. And if I push hard, it will fill up that whole circle. So this gives me the range, everything between there. Ooh. And it's very responsive, even though it's a browser-based program. And I can just use Command-Z to undo it. So that is my inking brush at 100% opacity, 100% flow. But then when I ink, I'm also going to up this smoothness. And I'll up it to about 30 and that's going to make everything just a little bit cleaner, a little bit smoother than if I don't have that smoothness on. If I turn it up too much, it's going to slow down my brush, and it will limit the versatility a little bit. But sure enough, everything will be really smooth. So I don't turn on smoothness for sketching. I only turn it on for, for inking. So right now I'm in sketching, and I like to use blue for sketching. It's because I'm old school and I used to use a colored pencil that's called non-photo blue. Non-photo blue colored pencils, there were a frequency of blue that was invisible to photocopiers. So you would sketch with those, then you would ink with black ink, then you would put it on the photocopier and you never had to erase anything because the photocopier would, would get rid of all your blue lines. That's not true anymore because now photocopiers are scanners. But when I sketch, I use blue. I use the same size brush. I use it at a 0% hardness. Maybe take that size down a little bit. But the opacity I take down to about 70. And then I just sketch. And how do I start the sketch? I start with the cranium. Actually, I'll take that opacity down even more. Okay. Or I'll take that blue color. That's a little toxic. 
take that down to a nice 